It's been there since the foundation of the world. Reshaping man's thoughts and ideas of life and redirecting man's pursuit in life to fit its agenda. It's a matter of these guys working through men endlessly using every way to hinder the advancement of the kingdom of God. It's Mammon, the spirit behind money. Charles and Susan Opio in their book Unmasking Mammon help their readers unmask this deadly spirit and embark on a journey back to the Father. Unmasking Mammon is a must read. Now available on Amazon and on order at cyruscom254 at gmail.com for physical copies. Grab your copy today and start off your journey to overcoming the spirit of Mammon. Unmasking Mammon by Charles and Susan Opio. Hello and welcome to the Cyrus community. This is Business Unusual. This is where we talk matters, kingdom, business, reformation. And this is based on a word that we received from God that we have power to create wealth. In this place, I'll recap again that when you enter the land that the Lord has given you, in this land, everything you have will be multiplied. This is a word from God, not from Moses. It's not from man. It is from God. And what does that mean? That when God gives his word, he backs his word. So when he tells you that you will enter the land, and in the land, everything you have will be multiplied. But in the process, God has been talking to us and adjusting some of the things that will hinder us from entering the land or manifesting in the land or having our, everything that we have multiplied. Now, one thing we know about God, yes. his promises are yea. And amen. And amen. I know people think that's King James. <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know, that, that term, his promises are yea and amen, basically means this. When God makes a promise, it's unchangeable. Mm. So it once has he has promised, the answer is already yes. Mm. Mm. And amen means it is done. Wow. It is established. So God gives us a word yes. and he has already said, I've given you power to create wealth. It is up to you to say yea and amen. Why? Because for me and for us here, yes. we believe the word. Listen. We've seen the word work. Maybe I should just re-emphasize something you've just said because it sounds so cliche. Yeah. Listen, people, <laughs> being around messaging and mm. preaching mm. and statements can make you incapable of hearing. Mm. Let me put it this way. It's not a bad thing to always be listening. Yes. But Jesus speaks, finishes speaking and saying, let those who have ears hear. Mm. I mean, there is a hearing that is beyond listening. Many times we listen and then we, we kind of categorize. I know what that means. No. Mm -hmm. if it, I always say this. If it hasn't changed you, hmm. you don't know what it means. You did not hear. You didn't hear it. So when Jesus says, let those who have ears, yes. there hear. is a hearing that causes you to do something. Exactly. And that hearing changes you. You become a better person and you become more son of God, closer to him. You can hear his voice and therefore you can work differently in your environment yes. like a son of God. Absolutely. And... I want to try and simplify what we mean by when a word of God is spoken. Mm. We need to understand, get your mind out of the word spoken to the God who spoke it. Mm. Yes. Because sometimes we get stuck in the word spoken. The word, the Therefore, word. we miss the whole idea mm. of the God who spoke that word. Yes. And the God who spoke that word is more important than you would ever imagine because his word then mm. carries his power, his authority, his intent, his will. All of that. So if you say you've had a word from God, what you're saying is you've understood the power behind that word. Yes. You've understood who spoke. You've understood the meaning. You've understood the intent, mm. the will. The big question should be, what is my part mm. in now walking in and accessing that word that was spoken? And I think for us what makes it so powerful is that when we say that we know the God of the word, yes. is where we go back and say, listen, you cannot separate the word of God from God of the word. Yes. God is the word. Yes. After the fall of man, God says, listen, I need to come to you, but I not, cannot come to you as God. No. You will not comprehend. No, you won't comprehend. So what do I do? I'll break myself into a level that you will understand. I give you a word, but if you can only understand that that word carries 
the complete intent of God for you for now, yes. then you look at that word different. Totally. And that is why, of course, when you're yes. talking about this season, yes. when you're going to the marketplace, and mm -hmm. God is telling us, get into your market space. Now, every time we talk to you and say, God is saying, do not hear it as a continuation of what we've always said in Christendom. Oh, yeah, in, you fact, know? <laughs> in fact, let's put it this way. The best way to interact with God is saying, mm -hmm. how we normally do it, is we assume God has said there's an, let me tell you why that is important. Mm -hmm. If I say I am saying something, you think it is going to happen. If I say I have said something, it means it has happened. Mm. So most of the time, God is exposing us to what he already did. Mm. He's not informing us on what he's going so to do. So every time we hear the word of God, yes. we know he's not telling you what he's intending to no. do. He's telling you what he's already done. Yes. But in your realm, in your position, in your posture now, it is what God wants to do in your yes, life. Exactly. So do you see you have to always, that's what we talk about yes. growth. Growth. Where we say that's where you have to grow and understand in the word of God. God, when God sends you a prophetic word or a proceeding word, he's telling you his intent for you that yes. is already completed. Yes. But in your realm, you are starting you to not step. Accessed it yet. So do you realize if you can stay with him, yes. stay with the word, believe the word, walk the word, meditate the word, it will show you the steps you need to take because the word is complete yes. in his realm. Yes, and yeah? it makes you more aware of what you already have access to. Okay. That's the power of the word. Yes. The power of the word, when God created in the material realm, he finished. Mm. So God is not going to create, but God is going to reconnect mm. you to what? to what he already created. And that's what he's doing in the market space. Find yes. your market space and you will thrive. Why? That is the, that's where we went back into Genesis and said that God breathed into man and man became. That breath of God redefined you, shaped you, told you who you are, gave you an identity. If you get that identity in the marketplace, you will not be fighting and toiling and trying to wonder who you are. You will walk into what God yep. already has done. Absolutely. So when we talk about the market space, now God is opening our eyes into the kind of capital we need to have as we walk into the market space. Exactly. And that is where we're talking about kingdom capital. Kingdom capital. Just a quick recap. Yes. We said that spiritual capital is what every believer must have. Yes. You can't walk into the market space empty or devoid of the spiritual capital. In fact, once you go there, you are at war and you are a victim. You are entering a space mm. where those who are there are superior to you. Please say it again. You are entering into war. Yes. If you go without the spiritual realm, mm. you are entering into a space where those who are there are more powerful to you. And let me explain to you the power of that war. Mm -hmm. Most people that think that war is confrontational and that war is going to attack you and bring you down. No. no. That war is a war of captivity. <laughs> the strategy of the enemy there is to capture you. Mm. And make you a slave. And make you a slave and a prisoner. Yeah. War is useless if you are not beneficial to those warring against you. Mm. The reason is not just to kill. In fact, yes. when you go to war, yeah, yeah. if you check biblical days and all that, the war was not about kill them, finish ah, them. No, it was to get them in. Capture them. Capture Let them, them come and serve us. They are coming to serve us. They are coming yes. to toil here. Exactly. But if you come from a kingdom dynamic mm. with spiritual insight, mm. the marketplace and your market space becomes the place where God is establishes a beachhead. Mm. God establishes a dwelling. Mm. God establishes his city and his nation. So in, in fact, in reverse, we are now setting captives free so they can function. Mm. In the same that. space where they were captives. Mm. That's so powerful. Yes. That in this season, God is sending a word that yes. is releasing you, setting you free. Now the problem is when you, become, you come out of captivity, sometimes you're like, when I hear the word, the word is telling me to do, but I'm coming from a place where somebody else did. So when, you go to your, when you're being told, go to the market uh, place and yes. find your space. Yes. In your space, you yes. hear God and do. Yeah. But there are many people who will be like, listen, here I'm being given responsibility. Exactly. I'm coming from a place where everybody, somebody else took responsibility and told me what to do. Exactly. Therefore, I'm still looking for somebody to tell me. Absolutely. You're being and, 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 and when you begin to see these things from a kingdom dynamic, parables like the parable of the talent begin to open your eyes. Even though the master gave them talents, and one day he came to ask for what they did, not to ask back for the talent. <laughs> Pay attention, he did not take back the talents. Yes. He asked them what they had done. Mm. Then the one who did more was given 
more. Mm. So what was he trying to do? Expand them, mm. not take from them. Mm. Understand the kingdom. Yeah. God gives us so we can grow, not so we can take. God is not coming to collect a reward. Mm. Not coming to collect something from us. And that no. is why when you understand <laughs> spiritual capital, where we yes. say those stories you are reading, being told how the kingdom operates, that when you're given, you're supposed to multiply and, and not for God, but for you yes. in the earth, yes. then you understand when we talk about spiritual capital should be your foundation as you go into the market space. Okay, we talked about the intelligence yes. and we talked about emotional. Yeah, we actually talked about intellectual capital, Sorry, intellectual <laughs> capital. and emotional capital. Today we want to talk about relationship capital. Like we said, many of us go into the economies not knowing that there are other types of capital. In the end, we are fools to think that the only capital is financial. Yes. And that's why financial capital is not our priority in this conversation, as you will notice. Mm. It has its place, but it is useless without the others. It is unfunctional. So today I want to talk about relationship mm. capital. Mm. Now, relationship capital is intangible yet powerful. Mm. Mm. Please say that again. It's intangible. You can't say this is relationship capital. Mm. You can't put a, a finger. You notice most of the capital we've been dealing with so far are intangibles, yet they are very, very crucial. So when you talk about relationship is not tangible, you're yes. simply saying do not go to your phone book to yes. look at how many people do I have in my That's phone book. That's not relationship capital. How many business cards do I have? That's not, That's not relationship capital. No, it's not. Yeah. Relationship capital. It's not about, let me put it this way, the best way to explain relationship capital. There are many people you know, but do they know you? Mm. Relationship capital is not about who you know. It's about who knows you. Now, that sounds simple, <laughs> but it is a hefty statement. I think right now, for many Kenyans, you can say <laughs> that King Charles is in the country. Yes. Don't we know him? Yes. Does he know Does us? Does he know you? Is that relationship capital? I think that lets you understand yes. when we say that there are people you know, but they don't know you. Yes. And they are, they even... are relatives yes. you know, but they don't, but know, they you. don't know you. You yes. have to explain yourself. Yes. In relationship capital, as yes. long as you have to introduce yourself three times. Exactly. For Listen, someone to get to there are even are. relatives, like you said, who are in power positions, but when you go, you have to introduce yourself. Mm. Yet you are related. That is not relationship capital. They don't know you. <laughs> I that, is, that. that is a relative, yeah. but there's no relationship capital mm. between you and your relative. Mm. This is so serious, even among siblings. There are siblings who have no relationship capital. Mm. Please explain that. Meaning, you are my brother, but I cannot recommend you. Mm. You are my sister, but I cannot come to you exactly. in time of need. Exactly. You cannot come to me. In time of need, there's no relationship that, capital. There's no relationship capital. Yes. So I think I love what you started by saying yeah. that relationship capital is intangible. It yes, is intangible, it is so but it is powerful. powerful. Yeah. Yes, it's an invisible force that moves things. Now, are you also saying when you talk about relationship capital? Because yes. when you say relationship, the yes. first thing you think is my relations. No, today there are some people between parents and children. There's no relationship, relationship capital. capital. And like you said, yes. between siblings, yes. there's no relationship capital. Yes. So when we talk about relationship capital, then I think we need to just define more and yes. more so from the kingdom yeah. and in the context yes. of the marketplace. So we're going to use it in the context of the marketplace, but yes. on a wide scale. Yeah. Because having relationship capital with your own sibling can cause them to fund your project. Okay. That's relationship capital. Yes. In other words, in the marketplace, relationship capital, while intangible, it can be materialized. Mm. That's why we mean by relationship capital. capital. Yes. It's not I know you, I love you. Mm. It's I can do for you. Mm. You can do for me. You can, can do, do for me. me. That's okay. relationship capital. Mm. And what I can do for you is not common mm. or normal. Mm. Please pay attention again. <laughs> relationship capital is not what I do for everyone. It's what I can do for a particular person mm. because of our relationship. Have you ever heard that statement said? I'm only doing this for you because of my relationship with the one who sent you. Mm. Sometimes you ride on a relationship capital matrix because at least somebody had developed with you relationship capital, which means it opened that another door of their own relationship capital mm. you were able to step into. Mm. So you're saying that, um, a question for you, yes. does your reference carry weight? That's correct. Meaning, even if it is your sibling, yes. and you're sending them 
somewhere. Yes. Does the door open or even the fact that you, you sent said. them, the door closes. Exactly. Who sent you? I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear you. Can you imagine how powerful yes. relationship capital can be? It is. Or how much it can close doors? Yes. So when you talk about your reference, does it carry weight? Can you send somebody somewhere? There are some people who, even if you send them to their own parents, yes. go and tell my parents I sent you. <laughs> the parents are like my friend. Yes. Leave that one alone. No. Even your own parents say, exactly. don't leave that. Why you've not built relationship capital yes. to even allow somebody say because of that reference even yes. i don't need to know you Simple. because i know that person can your word open doors mm. for people wow guys why this is big for us is that in the relational uh media mm. where we are in our orbit mm. our relationship capital in different relationships that we have literally opens nations mm. Mm. as in there's somebody who makes a call and says you need to hear the appeals and we travel to a nation mm. invited based on a reference of a word of somebody else. We are able to open doors at some level to people because I don't even need to call someone mm. to say you're coming. Mm -mm. I tell you go and if you say I said, they will listen to you. That is so powerful because when you go to another nation or to another city or to... Yes. You, 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 you meet people, yes. and somebody tells you, Opios sent me to you. Yes. Sometimes, what we're talking about relationship capital, is yes. you building it to a level where you say, wait, if Opios sent you, I don't need you to write for me all this, and I don't need to say, give me your ID. I need to confirm who you are. I need to confirm what you're saying. No, I'm relying on the... The capital I have, yes. the relationship capital I have with you yes. is what that person is working with. Guys, that is powerful because you're telling me in the market space, you can come and say, you know what? I need to bring in uh, products yes. from another, from an, uh, one nation to another yes. nation. Yes. One person can be the in-between. Absolutely. Your product and you. I'll, I'll, and they can take up that project yes, simply because, because you are referred by someone, they have a relationship yes. capital. I'll give you a practical one. Okay. In our different relationships, in the different uh, groups we sit in. Yeah. Sometimes, I'll give an example in Kenya, mm. a minister will get in touch with an apostle that I have relationship with outside the nation. And the first question they will ask me is, do you know this person? That is not a, a question of, do you know their name? Mm. Do you have their phone number? It's not a question no. of, do you have their phone number? Do you know where they preach? I know what they're asking. Mm. They're asking, is this somebody I can relate to? Mm. Is this someone you can vouch for their character? Yes. Their competence and connection to the kingdom of God? Yes. That's so two asking. things happen. The first thing happens is I have to be honest. Do we have a relationship? Yes or no? No, we don't. But I can say of what I know of mm. them. That's why it's important <laughs> how you carry yourself. Yes. There are people in this nation I have referred to and given good references though we've never met. Hmm. But because I have observed their character, I have observed yes. how they do ministry. So when people contact me and ask me, can I go ahead? I say, as far as I'm concerned, yes. This much that I know, yes. Again, authenticity. You cannot carry grudges or be prejudiced. Mm -hmm. You cannot, at that level of relationship, you give honesty. Even if you're the one who has an issue with the person, you say so. Mm -hmm. You say, on a personal level, I have this query, but that does not negate. Yes. Who they are, that Be is my opinion. Because again, when you talk about relationship capital, yes. and somebody is asking about another person, yes. it is not your duty yes. to, to police, to, or... po to, to spoil their reputation, exactly. to muddy the waters so that somebody cannot move Access forward. them. If you don't know the person, you can be like, you know, I don't know. So you do your due diligence. Yes. I don't. In but you don't have to come up and yeah. say, by the way, I even was waiting for an opportunity. Now I have a power. Now I'm going to muddy the water such yes. that that person can not even see no, we that don't. other person. No, that's not what you No, do. we don't. So relationship yeah. capital. When you go to the marketplace, it is key. And yes. one thing you need to get is it is intangible, yet it is what you need to yes. move their powerful relationship. Yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so, because you must understand that relationship capital, if you want to know if you have relationship capital, can your statement or your relationship cause a serious decision to be made? Remember our pen and paper mentality yeah. where I'm now auditing me. I'm auditing my orbit, my relationships. I'm sitting down and saying, wait a minute. What's your orbit like? 
Can you look at the people around you? Who are the people you can say they know me? Who are the people I hang around with? These kind of people, do they make decisions that affect yes. economies? Yes. Do they make decisions? Or we are in an orbit that does not impact anyone or anything. If you find that's where you are, you have to go back and say, stop. When you talk of relationship capital, I need to go back to the word of God to redefine me because the definition yes. I have right now yes. is attracting people who cannot make decisions anywhere Listen, or any, so, uh, change anything. Some groups of relationships mm -hmm. is the place where you choke your relationship capital. Please say that again. Some group of relationships, yes. that's where it is choked and killed. Mm. How do I know? Okay. There are some people who are supposedly friends. When one walks away and you ask him about his friend, the negatives he gives you, you wonder, what are they building? Mm, and tomorrow they'll be back together. They'll laugh together. Okay. They, the minute one walks away, he says, forget that person, never listen to him. I'm the one who knows him, never do this with him. So, so what are they developing? The same relationship, if yes. you come and say, let me ask you, are you in an, when you say an orbit, by the way, we're talking about your circle of friends. Yes. Okay? That's a complete orbit. Yes. When you talk about this circle of friends, you ask yourself, where, where will we be in the next five years? When exactly. you ask all of them, yeah. each gives the same answer. Hmm? Yes. Hmm? We don't know. Five years. We are here to be here. We are we here are for now. Anywhere. Why are we thinking of five years? Number one. Number two, when you ask these uh, relationships, what are you doing together? Who is building who? Who is growing who? Do you honor each other's grace? Do you respect each other? Is there such a thing such that if I come and tell you, let me tell you, I need to talk to you. There's something you need to change. Yes. Do you honor that? Do you honor the grace that your friends can see into you, talk to you and help you change to become a better person? Since you joined <laughs> them, how much have you grown emotionally, intellectually, economically? Oh. How have you grown? Okay, good question. How have you grown? Good Just question. being within that orbit. Have you changed yes. economically? Yes. Or let's even talk about economically because we're in TCC. Yeah. We talk matters finances. Have you grown economically? Are you the kind of person that tomorrow if you grow economically, you will just shift and you, go to a new group? There you go. Because you will know this group is toxic. It's to to toxic for your new yes, status. Yes, for new status. Number one. Number two, are you people staying together, entertaining mediocrity in the name of relationship? There are people who could be sitting together yep. and we are entertaining that we are poor, we don't have, we will never have, and we are okay like that because we are going to heaven. Is that the kind of relationship you have? Yeah. Or you have a relationship that is saying, listen, we might be here today, yes. but tomorrow we are, we are going somewhere else. We are growing, yes. and we are telling each other, it doesn't matter where we are today. As long as we have the word of God, we are moving to a new place, a better place. We are motivating each other, carrying each other, yes. and saying, no one left behind. Yes. These are the questions you must to ask. Yeah. In other words, in the spaces you are, the people you say you know, because many of us, want to have relationship capital that belongs to others but we don't build our own okay in other words i know people who can give me access who can you give access mm -hmm. is the mention of your name enough to give people access and even mm -hmm. favor mm -hmm. is, is i think these are questions yeah. that somebody sits, needs to sit and say wait mm -hmm. how many people have mm -hmm. i ever given favor or access yes how many people can use my name go and say by the way and by the way we are not talking about government offices no we are not talking about in the international world. No. We are saying in your jurisdiction. Yep. How many people have you given favor? Your name has given favor yeah. or access. You know? And I think why we are saying this, yeah? We need to say something now. You've heard us saying about relationship. Relationship. Why? Because when it comes to the kingdom of God, let's talk about people and when you talk about relationships. Yes. You see, in the kingdom of God, people are the currency. We are the key to everything. God has never said I sought resources. Mm. He has never said I look for gold. Oh. He has never said I look for silver. He said I look for a man. In fact, he says, silver is mine, gold is mine, yes. the earth is mine and the fu its fullness thereof. Yes. Meaning, listen, I don't need those things, they are mine. I need a man. What I need is a man. In every move of God mm -hmm. in the earth, in every transactional wow. change in the earth. Yes. The, 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 the book of Hebrews 11 is not a list of accomplishments. Mm. It's a list of people. Yes. What they accomplished 
is what they were. Mm. These are the heroes of faith as we call them. Yes. By faith, Abraham accomplished. The accomplishment is not the discussion. Mm. Abraham is. So God tells you, watch what one person can do because men exactly. in the earth are the resources of God. And maybe That's you need it. to mention here about Babylon and kingdom, yes. the difference between the currencies. Yes, please understand. In the, in, in the currency of Babylon, yes. money is the currency. But this is the problem. Money is the currency used to turn people into slaves. Hmm. People become the tool, notice, the tool of Babylon mm. and money is the master that is used to make them the tool. Okay? Okay. In the kingdom, people are the currency of God and mm. one day we'll just dedicate a, a whole conversation to those two principles. And money becomes the tool. So the people are the currency. Currency, money, money is, is the, the tool. tool. In Babylon, money is the, is the currency. currency. People are the two. And that is why in Babylon, people use people. Exactly. And that is why in Babylon, when you have money, you start trading people. Exactly. And you start yes, now people thinking, are your product now. people become the, become the product yes, and become tool. your tool for whatever you need yes. to get. And by the way, whoever you need to get out of the way yeah. for you to get what you need, yes. money is the currency. Exactly. So you're saying that in Babylon, when I need to trade, yes. when I need to get anything, and exactly. that is why even corruption works in Babylon because That's when it. I need to get anything, I need money exactly. to move the Things. thing I need. Yes. Okay. In the kingdom, you need people <laughs> to move things. Yeah. And if you understand that people are the real currency, and let me say why this is difficult for us to explain in a simple context, but this highlight should help you. Okay. One of the sad things about the church is that people who God has positioned in the marketplace that are actually his currency we are uprooting them mm, mm. and bringing them into the name of ministry. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> People are God's currency exactly. in the earth. Exactly. In Babylon, money is. Yes. So we are uprooting the currency of God. Exactly. From their jurisdiction, the yes. places where they are called. Yes. And bringing them and locking them in the four walls. Exactly. And then we think them functioning in the called four walls is serving God. Mm. Now here is the problem. If the church was alive in Joseph's time, yes. would have rescued him from Egypt. <laughs> would have brought him back to the promised land. Mm. Come would have back brought to him church. home. Come and the nation would have died of starvation. So God is telling Joseph, you will become. Yes. Sun, moon, and stars will bow to you. Yes. But as we are saying, as God is sending him out to Egypt, Thank the you. church is busy praying him, Bring back him back to church. Yes. And if you see those kind of people, if you see the Daniels, you see the Jacobs, when you go out there, God is telling you, I want you out there. Why? Because for us to say the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdom of our God yes. and he is Christ, we are saying we need people on the ground. As we are going to the ground, I'm pulling people back. You listen. Resource. God said this to me years ago. Okay. Wherever you are planted, geographically, mentally, spiritually, mm -hmm. will determine what grows or dies in you. Mm -hmm. So this is the mm -hmm. question. If we have a lot of people in our churches saying, I used to be. Mm -hmm. When I was. So being here should make you better. Mm -hmm. But... Being here, you're always still singing the song of where you are. Mm. That means here is a problem. Mm. Mm. So we need to change how we reconfigure them until here they become greater. Wait, you said something. They are still singing the song of where they came from. Thank you. Meaning, even though they are here, they are still... Here they, we are meaning yeah. church. Yes. Though you came to church, you're, you're still finding that what I was out there is was much greater. better and greater than where I am today. Yes. And now there are maybe anyone listening who would understand why we talk about coming from church to ecclesia. Yes. Because if church is a place of captivity, yes. where your, your growth, is actually stunted. Thank you. You're not growing. When you keep looking where you're coming from, you keep wishing, oh Lord, why did I have to live there? Why did there I? You go. Why was maybe I'll use the, my famous word? Why was I vomited yes. and thrown into this church? Why in this church I'm not growing? There's something inside of me that is calling me out, and yet I don't have the power to get out. So, so instead of the church being the power station where people get recharged, mm. it is a place where your battery dies. Mm. But you're happy. You're safe. 
Mm. Nobody's mm. touching you. Mm. Things are not moving. What has happened? We've reached a place where we are happy to have people in the hospital ward mm. talking about their life outside. But they are not coming out of but here. They will never That's why we always say that it's so interesting when people say, you know, the church is like a hospital. No, listen, there's no hospital that calls people in forever. Actually, the you, hospital's joy is to, to say reduce this, your time. Yes, this year we've had first of all no death. And many successful And anybody who was birthed in this hospital, we have sent them out exactly. to go and become. Now, the church you come in, even if you birth here, this baby is also being locked exactly. in here. Do not go. Yes. And I think many people will understand. You've always heard us talk about church to ecclesia or coming from the church era to the kingdom era. Now you understand. Because in the kingdom era, you're being thrusted out. You come here, you're given power that is able to thrust you into the world so that you can take your place. Why? Because many people from the church perspective yes. are running away from the world. Simple. You and know? please don't misunderstand. We're not fighting meetings. We're not fighting gatherings. Those are kingdom things. Yes. We're not fighting coming together, mm. fellowshipping. No. We're talking about the conversation, the philosophy. Well, that when you come in, you have this feeling it is better to be here, here. than out there. So That's you're saying that the church if we call it the church, the gathering, the yes. coming together should be a strategic place exactly. where people are given strategies of to how go. to go and take. Don't keep people here because when you keep people here, the only conversation you can have is of a place called heaven where everyone who goes up never comes down to tell us what it is. And the few who have come, they brought more fear than That's freedom. It. That's so it. we are simply saying, no, we will go to heaven. Leave that out. Yes. We are in the earth. Can we take over? Jesus said, there's a parable that talks about occupy till I come. Go and do until I come. Stay there. Do. I'm coming back. For you what? Go. For you to see what you have established. Yes. So we said before that when we stay in the temple and we have the temple mentality, the church mentality, we will always be facing the altar, but you will never be establishing anything in, in the world. That's we true. need to go out and establish. So today, yes. yeah. if a pastor was to ask, how many people have been here for five years? What have you established in Babylon? Fine, you've been praying and you're very good at that. What have you established? That is the bigger question. Yeah. What have you heard from God that you've been able mm -hmm. to take into mm -hmm. your space yeah. and make a change? Listen, people, we can't keep saying that Jesus says go into all the world and make disciples. Mm -hmm. And yet we go into all the world and collect people. Okay, wait. <laughs> make disciples and collect them. He never said bring them. Mm -hmm. He said, make nations, meaning the nations never moved from where they were. It is you who went. Yeah. The nations did not come. So we have to change how we look at this model. And that's where relationship capital becomes mm -hmm. important. Let me yes. say this also. If you want to find a place where relationship capital is terrible, it's inside the church. Mm -hmm. I think people have to understand, and I'm sure you are a Christian, you go to church and you know what you are saying is true, only that some people when the word church is touched, they get offended get prejudiced. and they feel like, no, 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 don't touch church. No, listen, just bring yourself into this place of reasoning, okay? In the church, why do you find terrible relationships? In the choir, why would you find terrible relationship? In the ushering department, why do you find hustling and fighting and conflict in those departments? Yet, this is where you should be equipped to know how to treat one another. Yes. So let me ask you the question. Yeah. Who do you know in the choir? Mm. You are in the choir. Yes. The things we have discussed so far, mm. are you able to do it? Can somebody who is within the choir recommend you? Mm. Mm. Can you recommend someone? Mm. <laughs> Can somebody in the ushering department with you recommend you? Can you recommend them? Now that you're in the ushering department, <laughs> how yeah. many doors have you opened for those around you? Thank you. Because that's your world. Thank you are you. there that's throughout the week. That's your orbit. Those are the people around you. When we talk about Christendom, we are simply saying that today many people will tell you, if I leave a church, I have left all my relationships. Why? Because the church makes you have relationships within the church. Meaning the day you leave and they turn four. My friend, you have no enemies, uh, friends out there. You know, you somebody, have no friends. somebody aptly said, the current church behaves like gangs. <laughs> if you leave one, we hunt you down. 
And by the way, we are not hunting you to come back. No. It's to kill you. No, not to bring you back. We are bringing no. you down. Yes. We do everything to attack your reputation. And I love how the church is when you leave, somebody says, by the way, I don't even think they were born again. Wait, you were with them for six years. You didn't think they were you born again. You didn't think they were born they again. They only stop being born again when they leave you. Oh. Relationship capital. capital. It's empty. It's empty in the it's church. It's not functional. Yeah. So, listen. <laughs> relationship capital is the network of contacts and relationships that you have built, not that you have. Mm, that you have? Built. There's an so, emphasis. So, I'm going back to the same issue of church. Yes. So, if you've been in a church for 10 years, the relationship capital, you should be asking yourself, fine, I have built a network within yes. my, my orbit. This yes. is where I live. This is all I know. My friends are all in the church. These friends you know, if you stepped out that network, did you build a relationship that they are your friends outside of the four walls? There you go. Or they are only your friends when within you show up in that space? Uh, the four walls. That's a serious question. Yeah. So I, I think also before we go on, yeah. why we are emphasizing this, especially the church relationships, is because we've seen people coming out of a church. Let's say somebody says, you know what, God is telling me to leave and go into the next level. I don't even know where I'm going, but I'm stepping out. The minute they step out, the church are the ones who are killing them, like you say, yes. a gang. They yes. are killing the ones who are, who are yeah. gone. Yeah. And we have seen people out there yes. unable to pick up their lives because, because the when damage. you tell them, can you start a business to sell to who? All my friends are in the former church. Yes. Uh, can you look for a job from where? All the people I knew I can ask for a job are there. So it's almost like when you come out, you feel like, you know what? I would rather go back to that slavery because at least I can eat and sleep because out here I'm lost. And that's what the kingdom, da uh, sorry, the church, the church does. does. Come in here to bring you to a it place cuts of... cuts you off from all relationships. Please talk about that. Yeah, the church cuts people off. Listen, there is nothing that we can say we have superior if it doesn't make people admire us. Mm. So if joining my community cuts you off, mm. listen, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. and let's get this very clear. Yeah. There's a difference between cutting off from bad habits, cutting off from bad company, and cutting off from relationships. Mm. There are relationships who may not be part of what we believe in, but they are still our relationships. Mm. We know how to interact with them because we are modeling for them a better dimension that should make them desire what we have. We are not making them useless until they hate what we have. Mm. Mm. That's what we have to learn to do. Yeah. So they are, listen, you have to have the ability. This is how you start building a relationship capital, to interact with people at all levels, and add value. Some of us cannot greet the security man. Mm. Some of us, man of God, you don't greet ushers. Mm. Mm. When you walk into a facility, your head is in the air like mm -hmm. a pharaoh. You see no one but God. Mm. Mm. You can't operate like that. You have Human to see people. Human beings, I think going back to what we said, yes. that men and women in the, the earth are the currency of God. And that's why we say God is about the souls of men. Not about money, not about things. Yes. Not about the buildings that we have. Not about the things that we have amassed. Yes. God is about men and women. Therefore, if I can value people yes. like I value the yes. word of God. Yes. Because even the Bible says that when Jesus was asked the two greatest commandments, yes. he rounded up to two. That's two. It. That's when it. he was asked what are the greatest commandments. Love God. Love man. Love man. And they put something mm -hmm. in between there as you love yourself. Because that one you already are You're used also to. a man. Yes. Remember? This is a principle. Yes. Now, for you to learn how important these things are, mm. is that you have to learn an art. One of the things my late father taught me that I have never forgotten and I've embedded it is leave people better than you found them. Leave people or places better. In other words, every time you walk away, even if you leave a community, mm. even if you leave a church, even, let it be said you are leaving was honorable. Mm, mm. Let it be said you left and you did not leave with, with, with harming. You mm. didn't leave because you did something bad. Mm. You didn't leave because you attacked someone. You left because it was time to leave. You can leave. Seasons come. You have to leave. Yes. But leave things better. In other words, also when you leave, let it be said, the space you occupied improved mm. in your time. Do not leave employment... And when you leave, they do not even employ someone to replace you. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. There are some people who leave employment and the company does Continues. not need to build, to, to employ anyone yeah. in your position. Yes. That's how much 
you had you no, no value. Effect. Oh, no value, no effect. Yes. Leave a place and they employ two or three. Exactly. To replace to you. Take your space. You leave a place better. Always. Do not go to work and use your paper. You remember the paper that has defined what you're supposed to do? Mm. I was told my work is to pick calls only. Even if somebody greets me to ask me direction, I'm like, that's not me, my friend. Go and ask the security man. I cannot do anything outside of what I was employed to. Why? Mm. Because, my friend, it's money for money. Mm. I give mm. you my time, you give me money. Your money does not allow me to tell you where the, the, the boss is. Yes. No, go and ask somebody else. Why? I want to work for money. I've given you my time. You've measured it. That's it. Yes. Somebody else is saying, listen, I'll leave this place better. Absolutely. By the time you leave, they're like, wait, did you realize that person... Uh, affected the whole Everybody, all departments just by their goodness or their badness. Wow, whichever relationship way. capital. So it is about quality and depth. Yes, it is not just about I have a relationship. Mm. What is the quality and what is the depth of that relationship? Yes, what are you willing to do for mm. that person? Mm. What are they willing to mm -hmm. do for you? That's now, in the Bible, there are various examples of people who operated or benefited. From relationship capital okay because sometimes you think this is just a an external thing we are saying it's a kingdom position how does it work where does it come from mm. so there are a number of people <laughs> that we want to look at in scripture yeah and these people are interesting each one of them had a dimension i think god shows capital. us that listen from the beginning men when i said let's create man in our image Men were going to be our currency in the earth. And that yes. is why we place them in the earth, not in the heavens. Yes. Because in the earth, we want to do things. God was creating man for something in the earth. Yes. Man fell. Okay? Yes. Forget about man, the, the, the original plan of God. Yep. Now God is redeeming man. Redeeming him for what? Yes. To take him to back to the position where he is the currency of God. Yes. And of course, let's start with Ruth. Yes, Ruth is in a powerful one. And the people we're going to discuss are people who both benefited and those who benefited others. Okay. Because of relationship capital. Mm -hmm. Ruth's loyalty and her relationship with her mother-in-law, Naomi. You know, that's where we get the famous statement, your people shall be my, your God shall be my God and your people shall be my people. Mm -hmm. That was Ruth. That's where that statement comes from. Yes. But that particular connection, that relational capital with Naomi, brought her to a place where she was married by Naomi's wealthy relative Boaz. And Ruth became the great great grandmother of David yes. and Jesus. Okay, wait, going back to what you just <laughs> said. Our famous statement. Yes. Your people shall, shall be, be my, my people. people. Her life. When people came around her, there's yes. one thing she taught. Yes. That when you're in a relationship, when you're in a uh, a covenant yes. relationship, it is. your people are my people. people. By the way, that thing is used in everywhere. It's used it? everywhere. Remember, it's also in Ruth. Where we get the principle of Rachel and Leah. Yes. When she, when the people of Israel were, were declaring a blessing to Boaz, that may the woman coming into your house yes. be like Rachel, Rachel and, and Leah. The women who built what the yeah. house of Israel. She is a builder. She, she has the principles of Rachel and yeah. Leah in her. Exactly. That's where we get it from. Uh, that's where Absolutely. we get that from her. Yeah. So that's the relational capital between Ruth and, and Naomi. Naomi. Right. It saw her yes. part, become exactly. part of the lineage of Christ. Absolutely. Can you imagine just a relationship? Yes. David? David and Jonathan. Not spoken of much. Mm. But people don't understand that it was crucial for them to have this relationship. Why? Jonathan is in line biologically for the throne. Okay. David is in line spiritually for the throne. Mm -hmm. Jonathan recognizes David <laughs> as the one. He even says, listen to this. Yes. I know you will be king after my father. Yes. And not I you. will stand with you. Can you imagine? When somebody says, listen, when I, when I talk about relationship capital, yes. and I honor others, I know as Jonathan, yes. he stepped out of the way. And let me tell you how serious it was. Jonathan warned David yes. when his father wanted to kill David. What I want you to think carefully. Mm. It is in Jonathan's benefit for David to be killed. <laughs> hmm. Because if David dies, Jonathan will be king. Yes. Jonathan recognizes God's grace on David. Mm. Jonathan warns him of his father's plan. Mm. And David is saved. Meaning, and when David Jonathan recognizes capital of God in the earth, and yes. he knows each person is a currency, and there is where one person yes. is more powerful than another. Exactly. Do Jonathan says, my friend, me getting into the throne, yes. uh -uh, it's not equal to God's 
operations in the earth when there David is there. there you go. Therefore, I'm the kind, same person who is saying, I want you to benefit. I want you yes. to grow. I want you to get into this place. Why are we talking about these people? See yourself. Yes. Ask yourself, am I a Jonathan? Yes. One who can say, I, we are both employed. Yes. My friend, if you are uh, sacked, my position. My position is I'm guaranteed. happy for you to go. I want you to go. Are you the kind of person? Or are you the one who says, I'll do anything I'll to make sure that there's something you're not doing right. I'll help you there. So that you, make so sure you, that you don't go because you need to take that position. Are yeah. you that kind of a person? Let's talk about capital. Esther. Now, Esther is interesting because the person who really benefited from this relationship is Mordecai. Because Mordecai realizes the Jews are going to be killed. Mm -hmm. Esther is not even aware. So he uses his relationship capital mm -hmm. with Esther who then uses her relationship capital yes. with King Ataxes? Mm. So on behalf of the nation, yes. Mordecai comes to Esther. Yes. And Esther, because of her relationship with Mordecai, says, you know what? I'll, I'll go to the king. I'll and she risks her relationship yes. with the king to save the nation of Israel. Would you do that? Would you risk the relationships you have to save another? There you go. Would you go and say, listen, I know so and so, and because I know them, I'll talk for you. Yes. And I know this will not happen. Yes. Can you imagine that kind of a person? Yeah, it is. There is Joseph. Now, Joseph's relationship, there are many stories <laughs> of Joseph, <laughs> but let's pick one guy. It's called the chief cup bearer. Joseph's relationship with two people in the prison. One is the chief cup bearer, one is the baker, yeah. the chief baker. Mm -hmm. What does he do? His relationship with the chief cup bearer is what later opens the door for him to be brought to Pharaoh and made him number two in the nation. Mm. Because at the time of his relationship with the chief cupbearer, he used his grace to benefit him. Yes. He prophesied and said, you will be restored. In mm. three days, the king is going to place you back in his position. That relationship became important in a day and, when it was required. And David was building relationships in prison. There you go, Joseph, he, yes. I mean Joseph. Yes. He did not look at the prison as a place of, you know what, Chaos. I, I need, you know, sympathy now, guys. I'm here. I'm not yes. supposed to be here. In fact, he, the, there's a way you can look at people and say, you know what, when you're in prison, you're telling people how you are not supposed to be Yes. There. Yes, you are not supposed to be there. But mm -hmm. you know what? God placed you there. Absolutely. And Joseph knew. I might not understand everything. But wherever he was placed, there's one thing he knew. Yes. I will do everything in my life as though unto the Lord. There you go. That's why he said, how can I do this thing against God? Meaning, uh -huh. he never at any point, no matter how low he sank, yes. he never put his relationship with God. There you go. Are we? Yes. Nehemiah. Nehemiah, another cupbearer, yeah. uses his relationship with the king to not only get permission to go and build, rebuild the city walls of Jerusalem, he even gets resources. Mm. So he used his relationship capital. Yeah. To access resources and authority from a king to build a controversial project. Mm. Because there was resistance in Jerusalem, the walls being rebuilt. Yet, he used his relationship. In fact, it's so funny, if you read the story, the Bible says the king asked him, why is your countenance so low? Mm. Why do you look unhappy? Why yes. are you sad? Mm. That tells you how the relationship was. To the level that it mattered to the king. That Nehemiah is okay. It's, you have to be okay. Yes. So that relationship had reached that level where yes. he cared about how he felt. Mm -hmm. And listen, Nehemiah didn't feel low because it was a bad day. Mm. He was a king's cup bearer. Okay. He felt low because the purposes of God were not mm -hmm. being established. And the kind of relationship he had, he, he used it, it not for me. Thank you. I'm using to make sure the things of God go on in the earth because I can see there's a slowdown somewhere. Thank you. The things that have been slowed, mm -hmm. I will use my relationship. Can you imagine that is so powerful that it was not to move his project, but the things of God. his thing, but it is yes. to move the purposes of God in the earth. And that is why you had wow. to say earlier, church, yeah? stop removing Nehemiah from next to the king. Oh, let them stay there. Let them we stay there. We need them there. We need them mm. to use. To, for, for God to work and accomplish things. They have an assignment. They are our currency. Mm, can I say something here? Yes. When we say do not remove Nehemiahs from there, neither do they. Do you take them from when they're in the church and start giving them positions in the church that they are not competent? They are not. Because you don't need this Nehemiah is Nehemiah in your Nehemiah. church. Wow, this person is next to the king. Therefore, in the church, you are the head usher. Don't give okay. him anything. Guys, you know we only have departments. that we, The only departments we can use yes. in the church is ushers, choir, Children's church, finances. So don't feel bad when we say 
you are the head asha yeah. you are supposed to be a nehemiah yeah. we are not talking to you we are saying listen we can see it from the bible yes. that do not take the nehemiahs out there do not take the josephs to come and give them positions in the church to try and keep them nope let them be the sons of god they are supposed to be here hear yes. the word and go back out to talk to absolutely the king yes paul in the new paul. testament now paul is good because in the new testament i could I could I could go through Paul's relationship with Barnabas yes. had its own context. Yes. It opened up a whole movement into regions nobody would have thought possible mm. because of they had he had this special special relational uh, capacity. Barnabas was an economic man, a businessman. Yes. Because of that, mm. they were able to open up whole areas. And in fact, God said, "Separate for me Paul, Paul. and Barnabas." Listen, people, God separates businessmen. Mm. Hmm. Paul and Barnabas. Paul, the apostle, Barnabas, the economic hmm. guy. So the apostle is going out. Yes. I'm sending him out, but he yes. needs an economic man with him. Yes, a as man part of the strategy. Heart has so been worked on by the word yes. of God that Barnabas would sell land, put the money there in the apostles' go. feet, and we're not saying you go and sell land here. No, it's Get a the principle. Picture. Get the principle that when he sold land, he brought the money to the apostles' feet. What is the key? The apostles' feet, not the money. Yes. Not the money. Listen again. He sold land. Stop looking at that. That's not what you're talking about. Mm. He brought the money. Leave the money out of this whole yes. picture. The apostles' feet is what we're talking about. That's Why? Barnabas understood the apostles' feet principle. That the apostle knows where the money needs to go. Are there widows? Are there destitute? Are there businesses Economies. that need to be uh, opened up? Is there a foreigner in the land who needs to be taken care of? Uh, Barnabas knew that Paul had the pattern and, of God. And let me say this. When we say the apostle knows... It's the apostolic doctrine, not the apostle person. Mm. I'll say that again. Mm. Because we're not saying that the apostle, the man of the God, man apostle, knows, knows which business should operate. No. no, but the principles the apostle teaches Teach. gives direction on where that economy should go. Mm. So Barnabas knew Paul has the patterns from God. Yes. Paul has a template. Yes. He has the blueprint. Yes. Therefore, if we put money in his feet, he knows where the money should yeah, go because is. he's connected to God. It is still him who will speak, but the word he's speaking is connected to God. So Barnabas are people yes. who have the ability to know the voice of God through a man. And, and you must know that their journeys were, some of their journeys were business journeys, both of them. Yes. They were not all preaching journeys. Mm. They were strategic movements of the kingdom. Yeah. Paul's interaction with Timothy became a relationship for the Greeks. Yes. Among the Greeks, Timothy was the key. Mm. Among many of the people that Paul needed to reach, Timothy became the key there mm. because of the relationship. There is Titus, another relationship. There is Aquila and yes. Priscilla, mm. another whole dynamic. These were Paul's business partners and yet apostles. Yes. Yes. Please notice that term. These were Paul's business partners. That's where he said he yes. would sit with uh, Aquila and Priscilla yes. because they were of the same trade. Exactly. Is that of the same trade, are? yes. They were of the same trade. Mm -hmm. They built tents. These guys had a serious economy. They built tents in Ephesus. Their client was the Roman army. They mm -hmm. were big businessmen, mm -hmm. all of them. The same Aquila and Priscilla, businessmen, okay. mentored a guy called, um, what was this? Apollo. Apollo, yeah. and a Greek sharp guy, a guy who understood Greek and understood Hebrew, understood this and taught. And the Bible says, and Aquila and Priscilla told him a better way. Mm. Meaning, these guys, even though they were business magnets, they still could direct apostolic mm. direction. And that's what you're talking about, uh, relationship, uh, relationship capital. Exactly. Men and women being the currency of God in the earth. Yes. You recognizing that you are a currency of God, yeah. and you have to ask yourself, like Babylon trusts money and uses money to do what they are doing in the earth. Yes. God is saying, I'm looking for a man. I'm yep. looking for my currency. A people who I can use in the earth to move what needs to be moved. They are the Barnabas yes. who will say, yep. me, I have had God. He is doing something. He's building something. Resources are required. Absolutely. I stand up as a Barnabas, the mentality of a Barnabas, and I come in yes. and step in and say, you know what? I know God is building this. There are some people, like you're saying, Aquila and Priscilla, people who will say, you know what? There's a teaching required. We need to mentor the next generation as a currency of God I'm standing in this place to do this we have the apostles the apostles, yes, prophets yes. the teachers and all that absolutely yeah and we have to raise the mindset that relationship Ship capital, capital is what makes people powerful any organization any community that is powerful and wealthy one of their primary 
capacities that nobody sees. That's why people misunderstand. Say, how come these people are taking over in this area? How come they are doing business so well? How come this community is so influential? You know why? Because you're looking at the outcome, you're not seeing the intangibles. <laughs> the intangible is their relationship capital. Time to talk to TCC. Yes. What's your relationship capital? Yep. Go back to the boardroom. Sit and ask questions. Hard questions to you. How many doors have I opened for people? How many uh, access points have I opened? How many people have I introduced? And after that, when I look at them, I say, you know what, Lord, thank you, you used me to move your currency in the earth. Where am I today positioned? In the earth or in Babylon? And what am I supposed to be doing in the kingdom? Remember, we always say something. You are working in Babylon, but you are supposed to be a citizen of the kingdom of God. Do not confuse the two. Yes. Your final thoughts? There's a question. In the field of relationship capital, yes. have you been sowing? <laughs> what are you harvesting now? That's what you've been sowing. If you're always taking, people keep taking from you. If you're always giving, people keep giving to you. Mm. Whatsoever a man sows, I don't know why we think that whatsoever is money. Mm. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. Mm. Are you sowing time in people's lives? Mm. Are you sowing goodness, kindness, relationship capital? Do you, do you leave people better than they are? Do you go out of your way to make things easy for people? Do you use that influence or capacity or whatever it is you have to benefit others? That's how you sow and that's how you increase. It's time to build up mm. on your relationship. Yes. Capital. And that's why we say that no matter what you have had today, always remember men and women around you are the resource or the currency of God in the earth. As we come to the end of a momentous and very, very powerful year where we've seen shifts, changes, movements in the earth, kingdom advancement unprecedented, but of major things that God is doing in the earth we didn't even know were possible. And as we have begun to walk with and walk in these processes, it's been an amazing journey. As we begin to wind down to take a break before we step into the fullness of a very, very accelerated season, I want to invite you to our open meeting. In this open meeting, we're going to have an interesting discussion. The place of hearing God in the marketplace or in your market space. The question is, how do you hear God and continue in functionality? How do you interact with clarity that you know the decision I'm making, I'm sure in my heart, is in line with the purposes of God? How do I know that my investment, my strategy, my idea has heaven's backing on it? How do I step through in a place where there are no formulas, that God gives you a step at a time? How do I know that currently the step I am taking is in line? And if not, how do I adjust back and begin to flow? These are the things we want to answer and deal with because this is going to be the key. We need a GPS system for the next level. One that speaks internally, inside of our heart, in a way that nobody else hears, but we hear clearly and loudly. So we're going to talk about a God positioning system. This is where we're going. Join us.